So for this section, we are going to explore the derivative as a function. So we defined the derivative in the last section. We said the derivative of a function at a number a is equal to this limit, f prime of a, we call it f prime of a, is equal to the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h if this limit exists. And we also talked at length about how this represents the slope of the tangent line, and I'll use this long line here just to say evaluated at a, um, or at a. So this is the slope of the tangent line when x equals a of a function. And so this came out of, and I won't go through all of it again, but this came out of looking at a function, zooming in on a point P at A, F of A, and saying if we want the slope of the tangent line right there, we have to actually use a secant line and take a limit as the distance between the second point that we've um, come up with, a Q point, and P goes to zero. So when this limit exists, we have the slope of a tangent line and we define it as the derivative. F prime is, is also what we say, F prime of A at um, of this function that represents the slope of the tangent line. So this is just review. This is recall from the last section. So we had done this in the last section for specific values of a. So when a equals 2 or when a equals negative 3 or a equals 0, right, we had run this limit through to find out what the numeric value of the slope of the tangent is. But at the end of that last section, we said, you know what, it is way easier, far easier if we could actually just find a formula, right, f prime of a. And so, so then we did it for this generic a, and we said, you know, let's just find f, um, f prime of a. And then if we want that tangent line, rather than at that point call that p1 that I have on my graph, if I want the slope over here of this tangent line at, say, p2, then, then I could just plug in uh, b instead of a. Okay. And so we, d we said it'd be way easier if we came up with a generic formula and then we could use that formula to find the slope of the tangent lines at multiple points, all the points in the domain of the function, in fact. So now we're just going to expand this idea of a generic formula and we are going to replace A with X and we're going to call it a function. Okay, We're going to create the derivative as a function. We're going to define, I shouldn't say create. <laughs> that was up to Newton and Leibniz. They did the creation of this, but, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's actually define it. So let's define the derivative of a curve. So the derivative of a function, we're notice uh, from that previous screen to this screen, we're literally just saying, you know what, this is, you know, we created a formula, but let's call it what it is, a function. So let's, let's replace that a with an x and say that the derivative of f of x is this function. It is f prime of x. We say f prime of x, and it is equal to the limit of f of x plus h minus f of, a, f of x over h as h goes to 0. So here is, and we'll, I don't know, let's give it some bubbles and some fireworks and some highlights because this is our limit definition of the derivative as a function. I'm going to even highlight it too. Uh, important, definitely important. We're going to use that. Um, it's use. It's 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 like the crux of the next, um, you know, s several sections and chapters. It's and and it's been building up to this for an entire chapter. So this is like a big deal. Let's let's highlight this. Make this a big deal. Um, this is the derivative of a function. Okay, f prime of x is defined as this limit. Now, this is provided this limit exists, and, and in this section, we're going to get into when will this limit not exist, and we'll talk about that. Okay? So, of course, the derivative is equal to this limit if this limit exists. And so then just to, just to be specific here and a couple of notes um, in my bullets underneath this definition, and that is if this derivative exists, which means that the limit exists at x equals a, then we say that the function is differentiable at a. And if f is differentiable at every point on some open interval, then we say that f is differentiable on that interval. Okay? And the domain of f prime of x <clears throat> is going to be the set of values for which this limit exists, okay? for which that f prime of x exists. Okay, and then just to always kind of bring us back to what it means, f prime of x, you know, the, the actual function that we're creating now is representing the slope of a tangent line to the curve at the points x, f of x. And that's, that's what this means. All right. So if, if um, this, 
this is all real important stuff. So uh, pause the video right now, make sure you write this down because um, we are going to utilize this and build off of this in the next um, several um, examples and videos. All right, so for our first example, so now let's find the derivative f prime of x for this function, this polynomial f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 5. Now, the mechanics of what we're doing actually are nothing new. We're just now defining a function, just like in the last section we were doing it for a, uh, now we're going to be doing it for x. So we're creating this, this function, now we're calling the derivative. So we're going to start off simply by remembering that f prime of x is actually defined to be the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h goes to zero. And this is going to give me, remember, this gives me a function that represents slopes of tangent lines to f of x, right? That's, that's what this function that I'm going to create. But I got to go through the mechanics of actually calculating this. Once we've got the function, we can talk more about the meaning of it. So let's do it. So for this first uh, part one, once we've got that function, though, we can answer part two. So on part two, and I actually have the graph here on the screen as well. Um, this is just a, um, obviously, it's a quadratic equation. Uh, so when we graph it, it gives us a parabola, and this parabola opens up. Okay, so let's take f prime of x. And let's compute the limit as h goes to 0. And I'm going to go ahead and scooch this over so I have some space of this function. And so the, the function here, it's right here um, on the left of the screen here. We can get it there. So this is going to be x plus h, because we're plugging in x plus h. So this is x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 5 minus... Now we're going to be subtracting just f of x, so minus x squared minus 3x plus 5 all over h. And now I need to do some simplification. So now I'm going to just get in here, I'm going to expand out that uh, x plus h, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, distribute the 3, the negative 3, negative 3x, negative 3h plus 5, distribute the negative, negative x squared, or subtract, uh, plus 3x minus 5, and that's all over h. And since I've expanded everything, I could actually drop the parentheses. And this is a difference quotient. Um, even on, by the way, even on the um, welcome back quiz for this course, this part we looked at, I'm just going to delete that, we looked at things like this, like a difference quotient, plugging this in. Um, and so this, oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, this we worked with, and now we're just adding in this component of a limit, right? When we, in this definition, we've simplified these. You should have simplified these. You've been, probably been simplifying these for uh, multiple math courses. These get sprinkled into pre-calculus courses quite a bit because they come up in calculus in this definition of the derivative. So this simplification process hopefully feels pretty comfortable. We're just going to go through here. A bunch of stuff's going to cancel. What is left has an H in it, so we are going to pull an h out, 2x plus h minus 3, and notice that the h we pulled out cancels with the h from the bottom, and now we're taking just a limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h minus 3. Obviously, h is 0, and so we're letting h approach 0, so this is equal to 2x minus 3. And that is a function. Remember all of this, we were finding f prime of x, the derivative of f with respect to x. So f prime of x is 2x minus 3. And we have our derivative. Okay? We have found a function. So remember that this function, right? I had it up here in the, the top part of the screen. This function represents the slopes of the tangent lines to that, that parabola. So whenever we're looking at, right, um, on part two, we're going to actually compute some slopes. So whenever we're looking at, looking for the slope 
of a tangent line to this f of x, we can use the derivative. That's what the derivative gives us. So, you know, over here it says find the slope of the tangent line to f of x at x equals negative 1. Well, f equals negative 1, that's right here. And if I want the slope of that tangent line right there, I'm just going to draw it in here. If I want the slope of that tangent line right there, right, Rather than going through all the process to, to do it each time, I now have a function that will calculate that for me. So for part two, so to find those slopes we're looking for, so to find slopes of tangents, I can just use f prime, right? So at x equals negative 1, f prime of negative 1 would be 2 times negative 1 minus 3, so that's negative 5. What that represents, that is the slope of the tangent line, to f of x, to the parabola, at x equals negative 1. Okay. That is exactly what we've just found. We've just found the slope of the tangent line. And if you check out this graph, and I mean my scale on the x-axis, um, just to get a good uh, visual of that parabola, I, I zoomed out um, on the y-axis quite a bit. Um, but you can definitely see that a negative slope makes sense. The, the function itself right there is going down. We have a decreasing function. We're going down. Um, and this slope, this line right here, would have a slope of negative 5. Okay. Now, if we want to do it at, say, 2. So if we want to now go over and do it at 2. So f, let's do squeeze that in here, f prime of 2. So what is f prime of 2? Well, we have a, I mean, it's like the coolest thing. We have a function. We can just plug right in here. So since we have a function, f prime of 2, just 2 times 2 minus 3, that is going to be a positive 1. Okay. And I won't write that in, but that's just the slope of the tangent line to f of x at x equals 2. So if we came over to the graph at x equals 2, pulled out our ruler and looked at the slope of the tangent line, uh, I, I got rid of the slope of the tangent line uh, just because I didn't want to have too much on the graph, but I took off the slope of the tangent line uh, at negative 1. But we can see here that the slope of this tangent line is a positive one, and it should be a positive one uh, based on the, the visual we've got here going here too, the graph. The graph has switched, right? It's gone through its vertex, um, and now it's starting to increase. And so if we zoom in on it right at x equals 2, we would have a positive slope, and in this case, the slope is 1. And it's not as steep as the line I had graphed before um, where we had a slope of negative 5. Okay, that was going down a lot faster than this one is. And if we keep going and we do it at x equals 5, let's squeeze one more in here, f prime of 5, if I can get it up on the screen here, f prime of 5 is going to be 2 times 5 minus 3, and f prime of 5 is in, so 7. So we have a slope of 7. So if we're over here at 5, 2, 4, so 5 would be about here on the graph. And if I were to pull out my ruler and I were to graph the slope of that tangent line, uh, graph that tangent line so we could look at the slope, okay, what we can see is we have a much steeper tangent line by the time we've moved over to, to 5. By the time we're over here at 5 versus 2, uh, oops, 2 is over a little bit further. Oh, I just erased it. Let's bring it back. Uh, 2 is actually right here. Okay. So by the time we're over here at 5, you can see we have a tangent line there with a slope of 7. Because it's increasing. The function is increasing at a faster rate. Right? It has a steeper slope. Okay. But that's the power of being able to, to, to find a derivative as a function. Then we can just use that function to, to do things like look at the slopes of the tangent lines. Okay? If we wanted equations of these tangent lines, we would take these slopes and the points and we would use the algebra to come up with um, the actual equations of the tangent lines. Okay, so let's answer one more question. I want to spend a little bit of time um, in this section talking about we know how to come up with the function. But this function itself is, it's a function that we could do all the same things we can with um, any function, right? We could graph this function. So just notice, since I've got it uh, right here on the screen, this is a line, right? This is, this is an actual line, and we'll come back to that in just a second. But 
if we were to want to take a graph, let's do this graphically first and then we'll talk about what that actual uh, function means. If we were to take a graph of a function, so this by the way, I didn't uh, label it, but this is y equals f of x, which was the parabola x squared, how do I have it up here? x squared, what was it? x squared minus 3x plus 5, okay? So there we go. Uh, so we've got this, this is the parabola, and if we were to want to graph, so let's look at number three. This says graph the derivative on the same graph as f of x, but let's use a different color. So let's use, uh, we use blue there, so why don't we use, we'll use red to graph the derivative. Now, we do know what the function, um, the derivative is as a function, and we could graph that line. But before we do that, I just want to notice a couple of key features here. If we're going to be graphing the derivative, we start looking for some key features. Like I notice that right in here at the vertex of this graph, that we have a horizontal tangent line. Well, the slope of a horizontal tangent is zero because a horizontal line has a slope of zero. So that means anywhere we have a horizontal tangent line, f prime of x has to be equal to zero. So I know that right at that point where I've drawn the horizontal tangent, that point would correspond with a point on, and it's about right there, that's going to correspond with a point on the graph of the tangent line where we cross the x-axis when the derivative is zero. So I'm going to put a point right there. That's going to correspond with that horizontal tangent line. So I know that the graph is going to, the graph of the derivative is going to cross the x-axis, be equal to zero at that point where I have that horizontal tangent. And if I had a horizontal tangent anywhere else, it would mean the same thing. Like I would have to be crossing the x-axis or the derivative would have to be equal to zero at that point. Now I think about what else is happening on this curve. And I'm going to just, um, while I'm talking, I'm going to highlight the areas I'm talking about. I notice that the slopes over here are very steep, but they are steep in a negative way, which means that the derivative, which represents the slopes of the tangent lines, are going to be negative, and they're going to continue to be negative until I hit that horizontal tangent line. But in that process, as I, as I continue this direction with the x's, my slopes are going to get ever increasingly less negative, right? The size of the slope, say, up here, maybe the slope right here, the slope of the tangent line is a negative 10. But then the slope of the tangent line, say, right here, when we did it, was negative 5 and we continue to get less and less negative, which means if I'm drawing my tangent line, it's gonna be negative, I'm sorry, if I'm drawing uh, my graph that represents slopes of the tangent lines, it's going to be coming up ever and ever less negative till it gets to the zero, and then look at what happens. So I'm gonna bring my highlighter and I'm gonna trace this parabola. Notice what happens to the tangent lines. Their slopes get ever more and more increasingly positive, bigger in size. So what's going to happen is this graph of f prime of x is going to continue to increase. And so even without looking at what the function was that I created, I have a graph f prime of x, and I'm going to erase some of the notes that I took as I did this. Um, I'm going to have a graph that would look something like this. And this is just, we're going to practice just kind of generically sketching these derivatives at first, and then we can get into actually using the formulas, the functions we come up with to graph them. But notice the, the key points on this graph, right? Where it crosses zero is where the function itself had a horizontal tangent line. Where the derivative's graph is negative is when the slopes of the tangent lines would be negative. When the derivative's graph is positive, that's when the slopes of the tangent lines would be positive. And it's linear, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, going up. As the slopes get steeper and steeper, the line is continuing to get bigger and bigger. And so now we actually have the graph of f of x and the graph of f prime of x graphed on the same, the same coordinate system, and we can kind of follow along with that. Now, as a note, I said we would come back to this. If I were to actually graph f prime of x, it's a line. So it has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 2. And, you know, might, I'd have to get in here and finagle with my slope. But we have a line that looks like that, right? We've graphed a line um, kind of just by visualizing what the derivative's basic shape should be here. Okay.
All right. Let's look at um, let's look at one more graph, maybe two more graphs um, to end this video. Okay, so let's look at these two. Um, we can fit these into this video, and since we ended the last example looking at the graph and sketching the graph of the derivative in the same color, we could, let's do the same here. So here we don't have a function that we're working with. We just have the graph of the function. So let's call this, I'll do it in blue, this blue graph right here is y equals f of x. And the instructions say, let's sketch the graph of the derivatives. So let's find f of prime of x, which remember represents, it's a function that represents the slopes of tangent lines at x. That's, that's what this new function that we've created represents. So if we think about it, and we're looking here, you know the couple of key features for this first one, I notice that the slope of the tangent line, if I were to draw a tangent line here and here, I notice that the slope would be zero, right? The slope of those tangent lines at those points would have to be zero. So that means when I say the slope of the tangent line equals zero, I'm writing m tan, but I could just as easily, because that we know that that is f prime of x. So at those places where I have those horizontal tangent lines, I know that the derivative has to be equal to zero. So if I'm graphing this function, it's going to have to cross the x-axis, be equal to zero at those two points. So corresponding with those places where we have those horizontal tangent lines, I have um, a value of zero for the derivative. And so then I start to think about, okay, well, what else is happening? Like, what's the behavior around those two points? Well, approaching, if we think about how what's happening right here, the slopes of these tangent lines, as I approach that horizontal tangent line, are negative. Okay, we are going down. If I were to draw in at any point here, if I were to draw in a tangent line, it is negative. But it is becoming less negative. If I were to zoom in right as it's going, it's becoming less steep, less negative. So the slopes are negative, but becoming ever less so negative. So, you know, like say up here, maybe we would be at negative 10. And here maybe we're at negative uh, 7. And in here maybe negative 4. And then negative 2. And then negative 1. Right? And so we are coming up and becoming ever less less negative. So I'm going to go ahead and erase just because I'm drawing on this as we talk, but I'm going to erase those horizontal tangents here and I'm going to draw the actual derivative. So the derivative here, those were the horizontal tangents gave us that, but the derivative is going to approach this point and after it hits this horizontal tangent, the slopes of the tangent lines are going to increase until they get to a point and then they start to, they're positive, right? They're going up and they're getting steeper, steeper till they hit about here and then they start to get less steep. So, you know, if you want to think about a number, the slopes of the tangent lines say as we start here, there's zero and then one, two, maybe gets to three and then it goes back down, two, one, zero. So that behavior, if we want to graph it, means that the slopes are going to go up, they're going to hit a peak, and then they're going to come back down to zero. So as we're graphing those slopes of those tangent lines, that's what we would be getting if we're thinking about this as a function. So it hits this peak, so right in here somewhere, we're kind of hitting the steepest we get, and then we get less steep. So still positive, but less steep. And then notice we hit that zero. I'm going to erase that so I can keep going. We hit that point where the horizontal tangent line is, the slope is zero, and then we go negative. And so we're like, say, negative one, negative two, negative three, and it gets more and more and more steep, which means that we have behavior. We also have some symmetry that you can see in the graph. So what we did on the other side, we could, uh, we could mimic, um, mimic here. Okay? So now we have this graph right here is y equals f prime of x. Okay, so in blue we have y equals f of x, and in red we've graphed y equals f prime of x. Okay, and we can see. So a couple things to note um, as we were doing this. When, you know, when graphing, when using a function y equals f of x to graph y equals f prime of x, a um, couple things that you're going to want to think about, right? You want to think about the locations where, so you want to think when f prime of x would be equal to zero. And that's when you have a horizontal tangent line. 
uh, and the reason is, right, f prime of x equaling 0 means the slope of the tangent line is 0. That's, that is a horizontal line. Okay. Um, we are also going to want to consider when f prime of x doesn't exist. Okay. So when doesn't it exist? When the limit as, and that's talk, we're going to talk about that on this next one, when the limit as h approaches 0 of f of uh, let me write this underneath so I can keep that uh, image up on the screen. So this is going to happen when f prime of x, remember, which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h doesn't exist, okay? when that limit does not exist. Okay, so we're going to have to consider that. Um, we'll talk about that. We didn't have any places where that would be an issue on the last one. Um, but then we also want to consider um, when f prime of x is greater than 0. That is when, right, we want to know when it equals 0, but then we also want to know when it's greater than 0. That's when, uh, when the function itself is increasing, right? So we want to think about when it's greater than 0. When is the derivative greater than 0? When are the slopes of the tangents positive? Okay, so slopes of tangents, that's what that means. Tangents are positive. And then, of course, we also want on the other side to think about when, on the other, you know, the other side of the number line, when f prime of x is less than 0. So when are those slopes negative? So when are the slopes of the tangents negative? So these are the things when we're going to use the graph of the function to graph f prime of x. These are the things that we're going to look at. We're going to want to think about, and then not only just, you know, I talked about when the slopes are positive and the slopes are negative, but how they become, right? The behavior, um, you know, increase and decrease of the slope. So I'm not actually going to write that as a, another bullet, but these are kind of the, the four main bullets that we're going to work with. And then we'll, we'll, in order to get the curvature of the derivative, we'll think about how these things happen. Okay. So how big, right? How, how positive is it? Is it getting more positive or less positive, more negative or less negative? We'll think about those things. So how with a question mark, how are these positive? How are they negative? Okay. So let's take a look at one more um, before we end this video to kind of summarize, because I want to talk about this piece. Like when does this limit, and this is, this is, um, this is interesting behavior, right? Like when does the derivative not exist? Like when would this limit not exist? And it is going to not exist at these two particular points on this graph. You know, on the last graph, we were able to identify where we had a horizontal tangent line when the slope at that point. Remember that when we talk about a tangent line, it's talking about right at a single point what the line that acts like the function would be doing. Okay? Now, right at these two, what we call these are actually called corners. Right at these two corners on this graph, we cannot draw a tangent line. We just can't. I mean, which way would you draw it? Coming from the left, your tangent lines look like this. And then right at that point, there's all of a sudden like, boom, there's like an immediate switch and coming the other direction from the right, the tangent lines look like that. That is a problem. We cannot, the limit doesn't exist right there. So right here, Notice if we were to zoom in on this point right here, this x value, and try to take the limit as h goes to 0. Now, remember, when h is non-directional, we are coming from both ways. So h going to 0, this would be h going to 0 from the left, and this would be h going to 0 from the right. Notice that the limit will not exist. This limit that I have highlighted on the other side of the screen, this derivative definition, will not exist at that corner because the slopes of the tangent lines coming from the left are positive. They're actually constant. They're like a positive, I'm just going to pull a number out, 1. It's like positive 1. We don't have a scale, so we're just going to have to make up a number. We have a positive 1 coming from the left of x. The slopes of all the tangent lines are positive 1. Then boom, right at that point x, the slopes all of a sudden switch, and now they're negative 1. Well, if we have a limit on one side that's positive 1 and on the other side that's negative 1, then that limit doesn't exist because the left and the right do not equal. Okay? And so if I were to be graphing this, if I were to think about it, these two places where I had those corners, those are not horizontal, or not horizontal tangent lines <clears throat> like we talked about on the last graph. 
But those are places where I actually do not have a derivative. I'm going to have a hole on my derivative. Now, we already talked about how all the way up here, these are constant. Everywhere, if I were to draw a tangent line at any of those points I just dotted out, they're going to have the same slope. And so what's going to happen is if those are all constant, I'm going to have a constant line, say y equals 1, coming in like that. I'm going to have a hole right there. All of a sudden, right at that point, it switches to a negative value, a negative slope, because all of a sudden the slopes are all negative. I get to my next corner, I have another hole for the derivative, and then the slope switches and is back to positive. So I would have something that looks like this. This is y equals, so in red I have graphed y equals f prime of x, and in blue, a function y equals f of x. So this is a place where this limit actually does not exist. Okay, those those a corner is an example. When you have a sharp change in the slopes of the tangent lines at a point, um, what that means is that the remember we have to remember the derivative is a limit. And so if the limit from the left doesn't equal the limit from the right, if there's a sharp change, the slopes are all positive one, and then all of a sudden the slopes are negative one right at that point, then the that limit which is talking about what happens exactly as we approach from both sides doesn't exist. Okay? So the derivative doesn't exist at those, those corners. In this case, we have corners. Okay? We have a graph like this. So that's, a, that's our first example of a place where this derivative, you know, where this limit, which is a derivative, the derivative is a limit, um, doesn't exist. So the derivative does not exist at those two corners on this particular graph.